What's up everybody, it's your boy Thorstead at the Kickback Gamers. I know there's a lot of game reviews out there, I appreciate you clicking on this one. Today we're looking at 7 Days to Die. Now a little bit brief description, imagine Rust and Minecraft had a baby. This is the game you would find. I have been playing this game since it came out. I have been lost in it, I have been spending my days off from work just playing this game, making a badass for it with my brother, just getting lost in hours and hours of gameplay. Here's the meat and potatoes. Zombies, crafting, sandbox, survival. That's all you need to know. A little bit of a difficulty curve, but it's a lot easier to learn. I know a lot of reviews have come out, they've compared the game to just strictly Minecraft. A better game to compare this to would be Ark. It's got a similar premise, you're just a survivor, spawn to this little area, no recollection of where you are you just have to survive. A little bit of a similar play style. A few things you don't get to make your own character, you don't get to make some wacky ass character, make it tall as you want. You get a selection of characters that have their own different looks, builds, some are shorter, some are taller. Taller characters I've noticed have clipping issues, they'll have trouble getting into certain doorways. We have a hatch in our little fort that we get into and we have punji sticks kind of around the cement blocks around it and he will sometimes hit his head on this punji spike because it's poking through the cement block and it's also hitting his head. Now, down to the technicals. Like Ark, you start out with nothing. You have to end up making your own tools by punching rocks and punching trees and you know grabbing thistle and what have you when you're using the tools or walking around. Let's just throw that out. Throw, the, uh, throw what I just said out. Alright, the game has a leveling system similar to Oblivion and where everything you do matters. When you're running, it matters. When you're digging, it matters. When you're hitting something, it matters. When you're breaking a rock with a rock, it matters. Those points will level up and accumulate. You'll level up. You can use the points you get or the five reward points for anything you would like to do, whether you want to improve your blunt weapons, whether you want to improve your tool making, you want to improve the ability of construction tools, you want to improve your tailoring, any way you want to do it. It's got an open end and it's just like Oblivion, where you can pretty much level up by swimming or running. You could just keep running and you would still get points towards leveling up. It will build your athletics, which will increase and improve your stamina. That's how the leveling system, that's how the technicality of the game works. Not a little bit like art. I know we've noticed. I know it's going to be talking about art quite a lot in this review. But me and my brother have both played that game quite a bit. He's played it extensively, a little bit more than I have. He knows it's become and becomes a grind in that game. It doesn't feel as rewarding as this game. When you're digging, you notice yourself getting faster if you're building a cave or if you're building what well, we built a tunnel or a fort under a rock. We built this expansive underground fort. You notice yourself getting faster when you're digging, when you improve your skills and you build better shovels, you notice that. That's something that you can go, oh, look at that, I'm doing better. When you're using your blunt weapons and zombies, and you build better tools, and you are at day 18 like us, and you have a moment where it's like, oh, the zombies are tougher, but we have steel axes now, and with the right swing, we brain any motherfucker that gets into us with one hit. That's what I like about the game, is that it just got a good improvement system. It feels very rewarding, it feels enriching when you're playing it. It's not like Ark where your, your weapons or your tools don't get better as you go on. You just make the same tool, you just feel stronger about it. Now your journey in this game isn't all sunshine and rainbows. When and when you die, you lose wellness points. Now your wellness is your overall health. It controls your stamina, your health, and when you die, you lose 10 wellness. You can also decrease your wellness through eating bad food or eating too many old sham sandwiches is what they call them or drinking murky water through getting dysentery but it won't go past 70 if you die it won't go any lower than that so you can increase your wellness by making sure you're well hydrated well fed you're cooking all the right foods you're making sure yourself is taken care of so it's not like it's lost forever you can reclaim that but it's a slow climb now there is a really steep learning curve at first when you start getting used to the game and getting to know it it just becomes non-existent. They don't teach you a whole lot of stuff, it kind of mostly goes on on its own. They have a short tutorial that gives you a few points when you do it, it teaches you, it tells you how to build an axe, build a 
shelter, build a bow and arrow, build a bedroll, yada yada yada. Going past that though, I've had the issue where I'm thinking, oh, I can't be drinking murky water, but I need to build the cooking pot, so I need to get the forge, I need to do all this, I need to do all this, I need to do all this. It doesn't, ha it doesn't actually have to be that way. Through trial and error, you can find out, oh, I can put water in tin cans that I find through eating dog food, uh, old spam, whatever. I get to collect the tin cans, I can put water in them, and I can boil it and clean it. It doesn't hydrate me as much, but I don't need to worry about getting to the bellows as soon as possible and kill myself over that. That's kind of a rookie mistake I've noticed I've made a couple times in my playthroughs is like, oh crap, I need to get make sure I have bottled water all the time. When you realize, oh, I can make boiled water, there's the learning curve. You get past it, you destroy that learning curve after you figure out how to play the game. After you've lost a couple games, you've died too much, you learn. That's the nice thing about it. It's not like, oh, I gotta make sure I don't get spawned by all the big Spinosaurus. I gotta make sure I gotta avoid the alligator. I gotta make sure I gotta avoid the fucking copies. I gotta make sure the creepers aren't gonna come in and blow my shit up while I'm just bouncing around. None of that. Now to wrap this review up, I give this game a solid 8 out of 10. I know a lot of people could disagree with me, you know, that the graphics are bad, there's a lot of graphical errors, there's this, there's this, there's this, you know, zombies are a little played out, but in the whole heart of the game, I've had a lot of fun with this game. Playing with my brother, playing the game solo, I've had fun making, let's put it this way, with Minecraft, I feel inadequate because I can't make these grand objects or buildings that I can't recreate Westeros. I feel I should be able to. With Ark, you have to make these giant bullpens so you can harvest and house all these dinosaurs you're going to tame. But with this game, I'm put in a setting where A, I don't have to worry about random players coming at me and killing me and taking my stuff. B, I can make something solid that houses me. I don't have to worry about anybody else. And C, the game feels ultimately rewarding. With Minecraft, there's no leveling system. Ark, the leveling system is weird, awkward, but here it's something familiar. It's the Oblivion leveling system. If not completely, it's something similar to it. And at the end of the day, I still gotta give this game an 8 out of 10. It has been super duper fun for me. I've been so enthralled with it. I've lasted 18 days with my brother and I making this badass Civil War-esque fort that just keeps getting bigger and keeps getting badder. Zombies cannot stand up against us. The fort is called Havel the Rock and you just can't stop the rock. And if you guys want us to do more Seven Days to Die, hell yeah, I love playing this game. My brother loves playing this game. I think we're certified experts at this point. We went from getting our asses kicked left and right to having dysentery shitting all over the place to rocking the fucking planet. No zombie, we brain that motherfucker. One shot, one kill, sledgehammer right to the dome. If you guys want some tips, tricks, We'll be glad to upload more videos for you guys. You want to learn some more about the game? Then give us a shout out. Give us a like, comment, subscribe. We got more videos coming. Thorstat the Kickback Gamers. I'll try to do better next time.